G'day Ziggy D here and welcome back for another Path of Exile Awakening guide. In this video I'm going to show you guys what divination cards are, how you can find them, how you can turn them in and how they work. Divination cards are a new item type to the Awakening expansion pack that allow you to deterministically farm for specific uniques, items and even currency orbs. The divination cards that you'll find in game are actually created by members of the community as a part of a supporter pack bonus for the Awakening expansion pack. This includes the theme, the actual item you'll receive, and the flavor text, all decided by a community member. When I earlier mentioned deterministic farming, this means that you can farm in a specific way to work your way towards a specific item. Now previously in the game, if you wanted to find, say, a Kaum's Primacy, you would need to farm up enough currency to be able to purchase it of another player, or hope that you got lucky to actually drop one for yourself. Well now you have a way to uh, more align the odds in your favor in actually getting the specific item that you want. For example, the Battleborn card just here gives you a unique axe. Now it can be any one of a number of different unique axes, but Cow's Primacy is one of those. So by farming specifically for the Battleborn card, you can have a chance at getting a unique axe, which could then in turn be the Cow's Primacy that you're after. Now this is achievable because divination cards actually drop in specific locations. The location depends on the actual divination card itself. Some divination cards have one location and others have many locations. The result of this is that an alternative to just randomly mapping or farming bosses and hoping to get lucky with the drop you're looking for, you can actually potentially, if a divination card set exists for the item you're looking for, farm a specific zone that those divination cards drop in and slowly build yourself up a set. There are a number of different ways for you to find out where specific divination cards set drop and what they actually give, but one such way is the Path of Exile wiki. There'll be a link for this page down in the description below. I'll also be likely to make some guides in the future for how to farm specific sets and the items that you can get from them as well. So here's some points on how divination cards actually work. Now in addition to dropping in specific locations, for example, the Battleborn currently drops in Kaun's Stronghold or Kaun's Dreams. So basically those two sets of zones can drop this Battleborn set for a unique axe. Now in addition to that, they have their own drop rarities, which is uncommunicated. This is kind of like a hidden behind the scenes thing. And then you have an actual amount of cards that you actually have to farm up. So the Battleborn, you need five cards to be able to complete the set. For comparison's sake, we have the Gem Cutter, which awards the Gem Cutter's Prism. And this is a three out of three set that can be farmed in either the Mines or the Crystal Veins. Now another thing to know about divination cards is that when you turn them in you actually get an item returned that is the same item level as your character's current level. So for example if I turn in the Battleborn here I'm going to get an item level 59 axe. Now when it comes to uniques this doesn't affect the actual uniques that you can get. This can still give me any unique axe. But this can be an important factor to note if you're looking to try and get six link items where it doesn't specify that it'll be a six linked item or if you're hoping to get a higher level piece of jewelry or armor or something like that that's going to be more relevant to you at higher levels. A good example of this practice in motion is the Carrion Crow set. This set awards a random piece of armor with a life roll on it. Now this is great for leveling, but if you find yourself not needing a piece of life armor at the moment, most of your gear is good, you're level 30, most of it's pretty good and you're leveling just fine, you can actually hold on to it until later so that you can turn it in when say you're level 50 or 55 when you may actually need some better armor or maybe you want to turn this in later game and use it as a crafting base to augment and then later regal. So if you do hold off from turning this in, when you do turn it in, it'll be the same item level as your character and you can potentially get a better base and a better life roll. So the result of this is you may have to make a decision when you complete your divination card set. Even if you completed the set in normal or cruel difficulty, you may want to hold on to it until end game, or it might be something that could help you out in the leveling process and then you want to turn it in earlier. So what do you actually do with a completed set once you have one? Well, once you make it to Act 4, at least in Normal, you can come over to the NPC here named Tasuni, and then go Trade Divination Cards, and you can trade the actual card set, as long as it's completed, to Tasuni for your item in return. So, let's see what I get from the Battleborn here. And I managed to find myself a Diatus, not a bad little unique. And then of course we know what we'll be getting from this one, the Gem Cutters. Pretty obvious stuff, I got myself a Gem Cutters Prism. So guys, hopefully you enjoyed this look at divination cards. I really like this new mechanic because it doesn't step on the toes of existing content, but rather enhances it and provides some alternative means of farming. It's also really great for self-found characters too. If you have any questions about divination cards, feel free to leave them in the comments below. And if you're new to my channel, make sure to hit that subscribe so you can catch my future guides for Path of Exile. That's it for now. I'm Ziggy D, and thanks for watching.